Next question is from Rudresh asking, are Muslim preachers like Muhammad Hijab, Sajid Lipam, et cetera, trying to attract a right-wing audience with the common anti-feminist, anti-modernity message? I'm, I mean, um, well, Islam is right-wing. Yes, Islam is right-wing. So... Um, I think the examples you're giving is not correct. I think Daniel Hiraj, Daniel Hariraju is doing that. I don't think Muhammad uh, Hijab or Sajid Lip, Lip, Liphan is doing that. Um, yeah, I think they, the person who's trying to do that is trying to find the conservatives in all religions. Uh, Daniel Hariraju is trying to find a way to unite the conservative Christians and the conservative Muslims and the conservative Jewish people and the conservative, I don't know, even Hindus, I think, against and unite them against modernity. And so that's what he's trying to do. Muhammad Hijab came out saying, directly saying, um, taking a position against uh, Daniel Hagaju, saying that we don't need, you know, we, we're not aligned with them, right? Especially when he talked about, um, not, like for example, Daniel Hagaju sees value in some of the propaganda that red pill people in the West have. Muhammad Hijab is like not not interested in that at all. He specifically come out and said, "We have everything is in Islam. We don't need these these people." Actually, he wanted to distance himself from these people and the way they talk and the way they act. Right. Danny Hagaju is like, yeah, even though these people have some things that are, are not okay with us, like we have more, we are more aligned against, we, we see the value of tradition, we see the value of, um, you know, the role of women in society. We're both like, un understand that they say the dangers of LGBT, um, and they also see the dangers of modernity and he thinks like right like they we say right-leaning people they just see they say that traditionalists right that's what they see see it as they say like we have the 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 enemy that they consider modernity is so strong that all these traditionalists should be able to get together and united right um and if you talk about sajid Lipham, he's even farther away uh from um so daniel Hagaju is like very interested in moving outside of the Muslim circle and go and find all these conservatives and preach to them and find unity and even preach Islam to them while he's doing it, right? Muhammad Hijab is more the traditional, uh, that is, you know, street that well kind of person, right? That was born out of like the streets of London <laughs> kind of tradition. Um, just go and talk about Islam and just stick with Islam. You don't need to use the other Come traditions. Oh, the, uh, wait. No, 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 I'm sorry. No, no, say it, say it, say it. Oh, just coming at you straight from the streets of London. <laughs> what is it called? Speaker's Corner. Yeah, Speaker's Corner, yeah. No, but, like, it's more about, like, he's still in line with the tradition of, like, Dawa tradition, uh, but, is but is interested in talking and reaching out to non-Muslims, okay? But the tradition is not, like, a general right-leaning, like, you know, I mean, it is right-leaning, but it's not in line with the same methods and uh, languages that a lot of the right-leaning people that we are we know in the west okay daniel Hagaju is more interested in using their vocabulary than muhammad hijab right uh muhammad hijab is more interested in going back to traditional uh, academic philosoph philosophical talk right so if you look at daniel Hagaju, it seems like he gets his uh, talking points from uh mostly from far left languages against modernity and far right language against modernity right he looks into those traditions and he gets a lot of inspiration from that muhammad hijab looks at he likes to he wants to see himself as an academic so he looks at a lot of uh, philosophical talk and he gets inspired from that right which is something this is why sajid libham is the the most traditional of them all okay because what muhammad hijab represents is kind of like the mortazalites a little bit in, 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 in uh, you know or a little bit like you know the 
you know, he's, he's like the Asheris or like if, if you want to go more Greek philosophy, the Motazilites. But if you want to become the like the most traditionalist, then you, you, YouTuber, you get Sajid Lipham, right? He would be more like the um, Hanafi school of thought. He's like, he would be the most Ibn Taymiyyan of them all, right? Like he is like not using, not only, so Danny Hayraju gets his inspirations from um far right far right and far left against modernity muhammad hijab from academia from philosophy from academia and philosophers right and sajid libham gets his inspiration from the sunnah from muhammad okay so i basically i'm endorsing sajid libham as the most direct the most accurate the most true follower of what is supposed to be sunnah right so he's like he's saying no to using your own rationality he's using he's saying no to using philosophy he's saying no to using all these other speaking points that all these other um either muhammad hijab have um or daniel have he wants he wants to constantly focus on bringing everybody back to scripture back to the quran back to the hadith not relying on these you know these methods these western methods of rational thinking um everything has been given to muslims through and through revelation and through the way of the prophet through sunnah you don't need to find you don't need inspiration from any from anywhere else you don't need to use their language you don't need to use their methods of coming to conclusion because god has already given you everything right so i think like as much as a lot of people think like, oh, Muhammad Hijab or Daniel Hayraju represent true Islam, I think the best, if you want to see the, the best, most accurate, the, the most true to Islam YouTuber out there, I think is Sajid, uh, Sajid Lepam. By the way, I also think Sajid is actually a nice person, um, unlike the rest of them. Like, um, it's weird because now, what I'm saying is that like, I, it, it, it might come across as, um, as me endorsing Islam. Because Islam, let me be clear, Islam is horrible, okay? It's, but it's just by accident that the one that is actually the most true to Islam is, is the nicest one of them all as well, okay? This has nothing to do with Islam being good or bad. Because Daniel Hayraju is not a nice person, right? Like the way he, he's not at all a nice person, right? Um, Muhammad Hijab is not at all a good person. Right? They go out horrible. of their way to denigrate people. Out of their way. They, they, these are horrible, horrible people. Okay, But Sajid Lipham is genuinely a nice person. Um, even though he's the most deluded one of them, right? Because he's like saying no to rationality as a whole. But he's not, he's a he's a good guy. Like, you know, I wish I could, I know he would never have me as a friend. Um but I would genuinely would be interested. Like if I met him randomly in life, I would genuinely want to be friends with this guy because this guy is genuinely caring and nice. He seems right? a lot nicer. I remember when we were watching that interview between him and Daniel Hikikaju, and I can't remember what Daniel was saying about gay men, but some crazy anti-gay propaganda. And Sajid was like, I don't think that's why people engage in that. Like he gave him pushback being like, you sound like, I don't think they're like that. Like, cause there's some, yeah, some crazy thing. Up, like, ugh, it was insane. But I remember him pushing back on that in the way that Daniel was like really being really dehumanizing. Um, and that, mm. that really stood out to me. Somebody saying, I thought, I mean, like Daniel, I like, I like listening to Daniel and listen to how he comes up with his arguments. That's very interesting to me. Okay. Mm -hmm. But he has been, like the way Daniel um, talks about, to, about like a posit prophet has like, you know, he has some he mental issues, the way he makes fun of that, the, the way he celebrates any Hagraju uh, celebrates wife beating or killing gay people or killing apostates, the way he jokes about it, the way he, uh, he endorses it. Obviously, I don't like him as an individual. Um, I, just, I find him genuine. I find him somebody that is not like I know. I, I think I know that Daniel is somebody who's being honest. He's not lying to people. He's not being dishonest. He actually believes in what he says. He thinks he's doing the best thing for the world. But again, he he has horrible beliefs, and he's not a good person, right? Um, but but 
Yeah. I mean, I would be so interested in talking to Sajid Labham, but he would not be interested in talking to me because he doesn't see any point in arguing about like the existence of God or Islam being true or not. He's only interested in giving the message of the Quran and that should be he thinks that's enough, right? So he would and he thinks like for he thinks that is irresponsible to talk to somebody like me uh, in front of his audience or any any other ex-Muslim because you're introducing your your audience to doubt uh, if you do such a thing, right? So he wants he doesn't he's not interested in debates like this. Oh, by the way, Sajid was very fair about like for example, um Sajid Lepam, he was, uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right, but like he said, when Apostle Prophet was debating Ali Dawa and Ali Dawa was say, claiming that Apostle Prophet is responsible for attacks on Muslims, Sajid thought that was so, he said that was unfair, right? Sajid was like, he's telling you that he's not again, he's not for an attack on Muslims. Like he's telling you that he's like, he's against Islam. And he's not in favor of abusing Muslims or, you know, so why don't you just take him at his word? Like, why do you keep saying, accusing him of being responsible for attacks on Muslims when he's, he never, like, and he defended, like, Sajid Dabam, like, the most traditional Muslim YouTuber I know, defended Apostle Prophet saying, like, he said he has never said anything against Muslims. That's what Sajid said. Def defending Apostle Prophet against that accusation. I was like, that is, I mean, I didn't, I've, have you seen like Ali Dawa, Muhammad Hijab, Dani Hikaji? You would never expect him to say anything like that about an ex-Muslim atheist, right? So that was, that was, you know, refreshing to see. <laughs> Siraj is a Muslim that usually trolls us, but he's saying Armin is fair compared to other ex-Muslims for sure. I am impressed. Yeah. Oh wow! Well, I don't know which other ex-Muslims you're talking about, but I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to take that compliment because I don't know who you're comparing me to. Okay, but thank you. I'll, ta I'll take the compliment. Um, what else do we have? Oh, here? maybe he does. He doesn't like that you call him a troll. Are you sure he's the same person? Why troll? Okay, he's not upset now. Well, Siraj, you usually come here to tell us about how atheism is stupid and about the like a law. Like, I don't know why you're what you're expecting how to be perceived on an atheist channel. <laughs> okay, let's. It's okay. They can, no, I, yeah. Let's be fair to Siraj. That's not true. It's okay. You can advertise. Um, I feel I felt bad for him because he was like complimenting me, and he's like. Why are you calling me a troll? <laughs> okay. <laughs> like maybe we're, maybe we're mistaking him with someone else. He's like, do you have an example? Okay, maybe there was another Siraj. Okay, okay. Sorry, Siraj. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't attack the people who are complimenting me. Okay, I want them to be motivated to continue complimenting me. If somebody says like Armin is fair, don't call them a troll. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Callie, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest Blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.